super excited to welcome an amazing dancer, choreographer, creative director, director, producer, the list goes on and on to uh, Just Dance. He's worked with everybody, Madonna, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, and again, the list goes on and on and on. Travis Payne, just come on to the show. We're so happy to have you here. Why, thank you. Thank you all. It's so great to see you, Kelly. And always, Tina, you already know, special place in my heart forever and ever and ever. Well, we thank you. It is just such a treat to have you. Oh, my pleasure. Um, well, I'll just start if that's okay, Kel. Mm -hmm. uh, so Travis, what I like to do, um, because I know we have a lot of fans that just adore you, but a lot of people don't know how you got your start, right? And even myself, we all kind of meet each other at auditions and we're just kind of buddies and, but we don't really get the chance, even when we're just, you know, kicking it on a set, we don't really get to know like what your journey was. So kind of briefly, like, where did you start? What brought you to kind of where you are today? Absolutely. I started in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, at, at about seven years old, I started training professionally or seriously. Um, okay. but, but before that time, I had always loved tumbling. You know, I loved watching ABC's Wild World of Sports and seeing the gymnastics. I loved seeing, you know, Solid Gold and seeing, you know, Anita Mann's dancers. Oh, wow. And I was able to tell her that a couple of weeks ago in person. But, nice. you know, I credit those two moments. And then, of course, there was a show called The Hot Shoe Show out of the UK. And it was like a dance exhibition thing, you know. Wow. And if you remember Danny Terrio and Motion, Dance Fever, like those kind of things really got me inspired about dance. Because I'd only seen Barishnikov and like The Nutcracker with school when you go on the trips. Right. But, I, but I loved it. And my, my dad, uh, who was an educator of many years at Atlanta University Center Marsborn College, and my mom had this friend who was a dance teacher, Norma Bell Mitchell. And so I started at her school um, and danced with her as the only boy in the school for years and mm -hmm. then went to Northside School of the Arts, um, which was a magnet school, kind of like fame for performing, singing, dancing and acting. And yeah. we had what was called the tour show. So there's a few connections I'm going to make. Michael Peters came at the height of his choreography career and taught a number, directed a number for Coca-Cola 100th Centennial Celebration. Oh, wow. So that was kind of where I really got the bug because we all grew up looking at, you know, all of his work and, you know. So, um, and Lori Warner was one of my classmates. We grew up oh. dancing together and our, and our studios would compete. Her mom had a dance studio. Right, I remember that. Yeah, so from probably 19 years old, we were friends. And then we wound up at Northside together. And yeah. then she moved to L.A. Um, and I was in Gary Harrison's dance company and was doing, like, a, I think a show at uh, the Fox Theater during Christmas time. And mm -hmm. Frank Gatson came backstage to meet me and said, you really should consider moving to L.A. And in my mind, it was about New York because we grew up wanting Ailey, Dance Theater of Harlem, all of that sort of life. Yeah. It never dawned on me that L.A. was there. All I knew was that's where the Jacksons lived and that's where they did Soul Train. That is all I knew. <gasps> and so when I, you know, met Frank and he was telling me, he said, and I'm representing one of Janet's choreographers. And I said, really? So he was able to tell me about LaBelle and, you know, um, of course, we stayed in touch because I was still I was still in school and we stayed in touch. So when it was time for me to go to college, you know, I reached out to him and said, you know, I really was I was at college. I was at Morehouse in Atlanta on a full scholarship because of, you know, my father's affiliation with the school and the education always had to come first. But for me, when I got into that environment, you know, having been a performer as long as I can remember, it just wasn't my calling. And I knew that. So. Mm -hmm. I knew I had an uncle who lived in California, and I knew that there was Cal Arts. So if I could get a scholarship to Cal Arts, then I'd at least be in California and in college. So hopefully everybody would be happy. Right. So I, I did that. And so I got here. Um, I connected with Frank, met Lavelle. Um, mm -hmm. At that time, you guys, the day I landed in L.A., mm -hmm. you guys were on the set of All Right. Oh, my gosh. I came from the airport to the set. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I was a super fan. I mean, Tina, you know how I got the job. It was like, 
when Anthony was going off into his choreography career after having, you know, developed, you know, the project with you and the team and Janet and for all those years, and he went off into his career, I had already seen 10 of the concerts. And oh so I just made a videotape with my version of Escapade, my version of Rhythm Nation, like in real time to the music, making oh. costume changes, everything oh. in a racquetball court. It was so full out. So I made a VHS tape. Janet gave it, um, Lavelle gave it to Janet. And then I met you guys, I think, in, in Japan. And uh, it was one of those big shows. But I remember being picked up in the airport, rushed to the theater, you know, to the, to the arena, the stadium, wherever we were, and right. um, rushed right into hair and makeup, met people really quick. Uh, they put me in Anthony's clothes. That way, and, and anybody who knows him will know how funny that was because he's so tall. And um, and then I did the show with you guys, you know, and met Janet after the show. Oh, my God. See, I had no idea how any of that came about. All it I was knew so fast. It was like the last it was like the last month of the tour. Right. Mm hmm. Yep. We were do it was it was in 91. And I remember we did, you know, like Holland, Sweden, you know, it was it was Asia and Europe. But my leg, I, I stayed out once with you guys. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I will never forget when, you know, because um, I know I'll just jump to it. One of the questions was how you and I met. But my memory is being on the bus and like you just have this infectious smile. And I, I always remember you sitting there just happy as could be. Now, mind you, we're all jaded. It's the end of the tour. We're exhausted. Anthony departed to go work on his own project, and here is Lavelle. I mean, here's Travis, and just happy camper, right? Just now, I thought, didn't you take Lavelle's spot? Mm -mm. What happened was, I was taking Anthony's spot, so I was okay. on stage left with Terry. Okay, Hitler, shout out to him, and then. Lavelle and Art Palmer, rest in peace, were to the right. And uh, so I just remember that all happened. But shortly after that, um, Lavelle left the tour. Okay, that's right. Because I remember uh, at one point, we're just like, we, well, we're not going to restate. We're not bringing anybody else on. So we kind of just have to restage it with the three guys as opposed to the four. But yeah. I do remember <laughs> part of me was like, is that real? Like, how can anyone be that happy? Because literally, I was. It was ear to ear, smart. Like you were so happy to be there. And bless mm -hmm. your heart. I, have to, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, every especially back then, everyone was so like, "There's no recording. There was no anything." Well, we didn't have cell phones. There was nothing. And I, if and if my memory serves me right, correct me. It does. Me. It does. Well, uh, <laughs> Travis had set up his own video camera out at the um at the sound tower right and that's because that's where we would film from for the you and we just do a big wide shot and i remember poor baby they were like shutting him down and he and you're i don't know if you remember but you're like well how's my mama gonna see this and it was so innocent and so sweet well, we were like, but this is Janet. You can't tape. What's wrong with you? You can't tape this. And at the same time, you just have this innocent that just wants his mama to see the show. And I will never, ever forget that. It was just so truly innocent and not, you know, mischievous at all. But, you know, especially at that time, you, everybody was so, we were so protective of her. And now that you've worked with the family for so long, you understand why. It was just like, you know, people were sneaking in stuff. And honestly, that was the year that I think I got my first video camera. I didn't know how to use it, but I bought one just for that tour. So it's just, it says a lot about like kind of your career and where you are today with all of your directing and producing that you already had a camera. It was already set. You were like five, six, seven, eight and film. And then it was like, nope, sorry. I don't know. Did they expect you eventually? Well Here's the thing. It was, we were in Hong Kong and I think we had come from, we had come from Japan somewhere in Asia 
And I think Akihabara or one of those sort of like electronic sort of cities. Yes. I went to on a day off because uh -huh. I knew that that video camera that we rented in LA helped me get the job. So uh -huh. how am I supposed to document? Because my parents wouldn't get to see it. We'd ar you'd already done the American tour. Right. So I said, all right, well, I need to invest in a video camera. I'm now being paid you know, as a Janet Jackson dancer at 19 years old. So I best A, document this and B, learn as much as I can from as many people as I can here. So right. I bought a video camera and um, I, I had a tripod <laughs> and I made sure to buy like the long enough tape. And so I went out to the soundboard and I just thought I was being, you know, efficient, you know, and not really asking for anything. I was just trying to make it work because I got nothing to do was a lot going on and we were moving you know so i set it up and i went and i did that show with y'all and i went back afterward and it was closed and the tripod was collapsed and it was all sitting on the table there and so i walked up and, it, and renee was you know not happy not happy so i cried <laughs> I, was and I was so God. upset but then Janet took me on the stage and we sat down like on the stairs, you know, like there was a bridge and you had sort of stairs to come down to the main deck. We sat on those stairs and she explained to me in that moment about copyright infringement. She explained to me about, uh, you know, um, intellectual property. You know, she really sort of told me why it wasn't possible, so you know, that I, that I hadn't done anything wrong and she understood what I was doing, you know, right. but she really sort of educated me about the why that was such a big deal because i had no idea i was so yeah. green so you know awesome. i was just happy to be there and y'all would say calm down because i would just be so and i remember in that show in hong kong we were in the round like it was a square <gasps> and I, yeah. and i remember because i was i was there last week so i had the memory you know um we stayed at the conrad hotel I got to see it. So I've been, you know, I go to Asia a lot. And every time I go to Hong Kong, I have that memory. And I see the, I see the arena is still there. So we went, we were in the, it was a, it was a square. And that was one of the only shows I think we ever did in the round. Uh huh. And Janet would give us solos. And so I took off and ran around the whole square, <laughs> around the whole audience and tumbled across the front and planned some big finish. Cause I thought I was having my videotape. <laughs> <laughs> 